Hello! Today I'll be showing you how to make these two sprites right here. One is a spike and the other one is a sort of brick looking sprite. So the first thing you want to do is open up Krita and next we want to make a document of size 256 by 256 with a resolution of 300 ppi. Now then, the first thing I'll want to do is select a sort of brown looking color. I want to go for something that's dark but at the same time a sort of nice rich looking color so something uh, along maybe something like this now i'll select the fill tool and just fill this entire layer with that color okay i'm going to rename this layer to background and now here's the tricky part okay here is the part where we make the actual brick looking thing. What I'm going to do is select the ink brush 25. Now I'll pick the rectangle tool because we're trying to make two squares. Okay, two squares, that's it. And uh, what I'm going to do is with my color selected to black, it is completely black over here. I'm going to left click. Oh, and the size of the brush, we'll, we'll keep the size of the brush at 10 seems like a decent size and with that selected I'm going to left click on the corner right here in the corner and then hold down shift so that I'm going so that I make a nice little box and there you go I'm going to fill the entire canvas with this now what we want to do is make a sort of grid so that we know where the center of our canvas is to do this I'm going to go into view click on show grid and what I'm going to do is go into settings, dockers, look for grid and guide. Now this sort of thing should have appeared right here. There you go. Whoop, there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the X and Y spacing to half the size of this canvas. So if it's 256, then it would be 1 to 8. I'm, I'm good at maths. I hope. 1 to 8. There you go. See? And that's what we are going to use to make our second box. Um, there are two ways of doing this. One is by making another box, which if you want, you can do that. Another way is just to select the older layer, make a copy of it by clicking on this little thing over here. It's a duplicate layer thing and go click on select transform layer and you should see this sort of thing appear. Now just bring it down small in size and yeah, th about there. That seems like a good amount. You'll want to make sure that the square is small enough that it just looks like a sort of podium on top of this sort of thing. It's you, you can make it like half the size. You can make it one third the size. That's totally up to you. I, I kind of like the size, so I'm going to stick with it. And now I'm going to zoom in completely to like 6,000, 6,400 times. And there you go, just move the layer a little bit. I try to match the crosshair of this layer, that is the center of the layer, to the grid. And I moved it by just left clicking anywhere around the, so the center. And now what I want to do is sort of have a kind of texture to the bottom, to the base of this of this box. Now what I'm going to do is select my ink brush again, change the size to 5 and make a new layer, this time by clicking on the ground layer and then making a new layer so that there's a layer right above the background and I'm going to call this cracks. Uh, you know what, no, just to differentiate it, let's make it a size of 3 this time, not a size of 5, just so that the cracks don't look like it's part of the box. So yeah, we're just going to make a bunch of cracks and just have fun with this particular step. You re there really is nothing you have to worry about while making these cracks other than making sure that you don't make them within the, within the inner box right here. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to stick with this. This looks like a fairly decent looking a brick kind of looking thing. All right, so now what I want to try and do is have some s sort of shading like thing going on. I'm not, this isn't exactly shading, but I kind of want to show a sort of height difference over here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select two colors. Uh, let's go for a very, a very light color, something that's too light. Uh, somewhere towards light. There, there you go. That, that's a good color right there. That's a very nice color. And now what I want to do is pick a brush that has a very soft edge. Now I'm going to right click on my canvas, click on this little button over here, click on circle and there you go. I have a bunch of uh, brushes over here and I'm going to pick this brush right here, basic tip Gaussian. There you go. This, this is a very soft looking brush. It is amazing. Okay. Now what I'm going to do 
is reduce the size because the size is just way too fat. Don't worry if we kind of go overboard with the shading because we can delete it afterwards. That's totally fine. So yeah, let's, um, let's maybe make the size 20. And I'm going to go on to the inner edge of this. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to make a new layer. Whoops, my bad. I make a new layer and uh, that, that layer should be above the cracks layer. Let's use a rectangle tool for that. That seems a lot more easier. I'm going to select the inner, I'm going to click on the inner corner of the box, inner upper left corner of the box and go all the way to the lower right corner of the box. Boom. There you go. See, we have a nice looking, nice shaded looking thing. Now select the brush tool and just select a eraser. You can right click, go into here, select eraser. That's up to you and just erase that's it really and there you go see nice and clean now we're going to repeat these exact same steps for the shadows uh quote unquote shadows so i'm going to pick a color that is fairly darker than the base color that we have uh something like maybe yeah that, that's a good color i'm going to make a new layer and repeat the exact same step as before there you go as you can see, because of how dark this is, uh, you, you can kind of see this sort of issue over here where the cracks aren't even seen. I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this layer just so that we can avoid any problem. And there you go. I reduced the opacity to around 65. I kind of like that. And uh, now what I'm going to do is repeat the exact same process, but this time for this box right here so that now that now there's another shadow coming in from this upper box all right there you go that's our brick texture right there now if you're wondering how this would look if you tiled it and uh, basically added more and more of this oh god no that's nasty looking if you uh, basically added more and more of this around this particular piece i'm going to enable wraparound mode and there you go all right so the final thing i want to do for this particular tile is group it group all the layers so that we can export all of them together at the end now what i'm going to do is create a group layer which is a new kind of layer if you click on this don't click on the plus sign rather click on this arrow that's located right next to the plus sign click on group layer and now you should see a new layer that pops up with a sort of folder like icon right next to it okay so what you want to do is put all of your layers into that particular layer left click on the uppermost layer and then shift left click the background layer so that's selected everything from the top layer to my background layer and clicking on the left layer uh, clicking on the topmost layer i'm going to left click hold and drag it all the way to this new layer and there you go if i click on this little folder icon it kind of toggles the group view and now i can disable it altogether okay so we're going to let that be now what we're going to do is make the spikes this is a very very simple process however we will need grids i know it's it's very it's horrible i know that but we need a grid to do this. It's not all that difficult. All right. So now what we're going. So now I'm going to make a new layer, and what I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool again with my ink brush 25 selected this time. Let's go for a 10. I I, I feel like a 10 might be a nice number. Yeah, 10. Then 10 seems like a nice number. And this time what I'm going to do is select the outline, which is the brush over here, as you can see. Uh, in the tool options, I have fill, not filled at all. We'll fill this in the end afterwards and outline should be set to brush. Now with my, with my size set to 10, I'm going to make a rectangle from one end. Now you have to make sure, uh, sorry, five. What am I doing? Oh my God, it's five, not 10. So what I'm going to do now is I have to make sure that I left click on the edge of this canvas at let's say one third the height. Uh, we, we'll just roughly guesstimate this uh, around there, one third the height. Yeah, you have to make sure that you're exactly on the edge of the canvas, left click, and then go all the way to the lower corner of the canvas. And there you go, that's our block. Now I'm going to fill this in. 
using a random color. So I'm going to again select my brush and just paint this along like this. Just keep on painting and painting and painting. In fact, to, to ch speed up the process, I'm going to change the size and there you go. Next, what I want to do is make the actual spike itself. And uh, to do this, we'll kind of need to use the grid option. So we're going to go into view and click on show grid. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the polygon tool. That's this little tool over here with a hexagon on it. And I'm going to select my brush, which is the ink brush 25 with a size of 10 pixels and the color set to pure black. All right, so one thing you want to make sure is to go somewhere above the inner line of the box. So instead of going over here, you will kind of want to, oh, oh, what have I done? <laughs> you kind of want to do something, you kind of want to go somewhere over here-ish, somewhere in the middle, I feel. That, that seems like a good amount. And again, you want to go to the exact edge of the canvas and left click once, that should make a point and automatically you can kind of see this line that forms. We need to make sure that that line goes not exactly to the tippy top point of this canvas, somewhere a little bit lower than that, just a little bit, and left click. That makes another point. We're gonna repeat this process, kind of like how that looks, and go all the way to this, to our starting point. As you can see, there's a circle that forms the second that we get to it, that is a good sign. That means that's the end of our box, of our polygon, in fact. And now you can see a nice, cute little triangle with its tippy top over there, spiky and everything. It's awesome. And finally, we're going to color this. I'm going to pick a sort of gray with a hint of blue in it. I kind of like that color, a sort of silvery looking color, something like, yeah, something like that. I feel like that's a good color. So yeah, something like that. That that that's a good color, and I'm going to select this. In fact, you know what? First, I'm going to disable the grids because it's kind of annoying. Disable the grid, select this, and now I'm going to use a paint bucket on it. There you go. See, now because I've used this method, I'm going to press Control Shift D to deselect or Control Shift A, sorry, to deselect. And now because we've used the contiguous selection tool, uh, we'll sort of have this weird thing that happens where uh, the edges don't exactly get colored in properly. So we kind of have to go over the edges one time real quick with the brush. So the final thing we're going to do now is make a group layer. And as we did with the block, with the brick block, we're going to just group all the layers. And that's it, that right there is our little thing. There you go, see? Oh, wait, wh wh what's going on? There you go, and that, okay, so. There you go, see, that's our little block and that's our spike, yay, okay. Now the final thing you'll want to do is export this, export it as a PNG, and by that I mean making sure that the, the, it's transparent and that only this little spike thing is seen. So what we're going to do is disable the background image. That's by clicking on this little eye right here and going into file, click on export, select wherever you want your spike to be saved, save as type, select PNG, PNG, I can't speak right now. And let's name it spike. There you go, nice. Now you can keep the exact same settings that I have. However, I think uh, by default it's set to two, which again is fine, but I kind of want almost zero compression to happen. Uh, you want to make sure that store alpha channel transparency is checked. Very important for the transparency to happen. And click on okay, boom. We're gonna repeat the exact same process for our brick texture right here. Uh, let's call it brick or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it brick. There you go. That's it. We have, we have finally finished our beautiful texture. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helped you in some way. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.